here we go. What is an EPA carburetor? Well, I'm not sure. I'm just going to say it was about 19, about 1985 or 1986. Okay. Uh, I was in the military. Uh, I remember the act came about, I think, in the 70s, about 79, but they didn't implement it till maybe five or six years later. It was called the Environmental P Protection Agency uh, Emissions Act. Okay. They started regulating and putting emissions heavily on motor vehicles, even as far back as, I think, 73 or 74, you started really seeing your first emissions-controlled vehicles, like Chrysler was a freaking catastrophe with that box on top of the air cleaner they had and some of the other stuff. For small engines, okay, it's the way I can date, and it doesn't always, it doesn't always pan out. Most of the time, I can date a piece of equipment by what type of carburetor if it has not been replaced. I'm talking vintage stuff, okay? Uh, if not, sometimes, like on this very cracked head, it has 4-0-1965. I'm not sure that that's the original engine because I don't think that machine was made until about 84, 85. So this might have been, an, uh, what this looks like, this engine, to me, is a replacement engine. It has all the signs of that. Um, and what I think happened here is, if you can see this head's cracked, there is a lot of stress cracking. Now, did that come from heat? A stress crack from heat is a fracture type of crack. This has many spider webs. So what it tells me is either the egg head did not tighten the spark plug or it was loose and water leaked in. <coughs> I'm either coughing or sneezing out here, and it's neither the smoky, well, sometimes it is, but uh, I don't know. There, there's something in the air right now, uh, speaking of. Uh, they can shoot all those missiles and bombs off. That does nothing to the atmosphere, nothing at all. It's your car that's causing all this creepy weather, and this is creepy weather. It, this was a wet, miserable, heavy snow. My ass is dragging from clearing off. I just cleared the roofs and stuff like that. So you guys worrying about bills and stuff like that, fixing things for yourself if you're working, it is going to absorb some of your time. It, it, it will. But learn about things, okay? Here was one of the things that I learned about early. One of the things I learned about early growing up in a speed shop was jetting carburetors. And I'll show you something vintage, okay, from back. This is from back from my Roadrunner. My Roadrunner days when I was drag racing. These are your like your power valve, your needle and seat, and I have numerous types because on uh, 440s on the uh, NHRA Roadrunner, so that's a Carter kit. They have the Carter AFBs. Now on the Roadrunner, okay, I'll put you back up on the tripod, and I'll give you an explanation for something that you probably I hate this. I got I got to get this head off of here because it doesn't stay uh, the way it is on the Roadrunner. The Carter AFBs, okay, that are on the Chrysler intake. The front carburetor, for some reason, is jetted leaner. And actually, some of them are different, and they have a different accelerator pump. And I noticed that when I looked, when I bought the aftermarket set, it was one of the first things I bought at Nick's Speed Shop. It was down in Fountain Hill, Pennsylvania. And he was the one that told me, he said, there was a 440, the Super Magnum or, or something like that. Not the 440 Magnum, but like the Super Magnum. One had a smaller front carburetor, a Carter AFB. It was a, They're like weird, really sought after. And those were on the NHRA Roadrunner, and that's what I had. So I had to buy jetting because some genius in the bottle, whenever they screwed up that linkage and stuff, they had those carburetors off. They didn't know how to calibrate the linkage because it's like uh, a bolt. Okay, it has a, a nut. Okay, it'll open one carburetor further than the other, or you know what I mean? You could adjust it back and forth. That was for drag racing, and that's why it was an NHRA Roadrunner, and that's why it had that queer carburetor set up. And I don't know how many other cars in the world, because when the appraiser looked at it and he saw that intake, uh, it has an NF2C on top of the intake, whatever that stands for, NF2C. Uh, you know, National Frankenstein Association or Corporation or whatever. But anyway, that is a totally weird setup. And I ran across 
a Diamond P Sports video back in the early 90s. And they were covered, there, there's only one video I ever saw. And I said, geez, Nick was right. I don't know how Nick knew that. Nick was basically a GM guy, but everybody else in the neighborhood down there at that time, we were all Chrysler Direct Connection guys. And we had to run all the way over to Eberhardt for regular direct connection valve covers and direct connection parts. But Nick, through the mecca of meeting these guys, he was the one that actually told me what, what that was on the car. So jetting to these carburetors, you can go on stents, okay, and get jetting. Because this, I, t I disassembled this, okay, it has those blocks. It's non-adjustable. So this carburetor was a replacement carburetor. And it was probably one of the first Chinese carburetors. Probably, I know, they probably got a pretty good buck for that. But you can see, okay. Now this, I have to have that fuck around and find out. That's what a speed shop is all about. You fooled with stuff and you find out. If I take that out of there, sometimes there's nothing back there. Uh, sometimes there's a screw, but it does nothing, and other times you can adjust them. I prefer this brand of carburetor. I've never bought one that's bad, but they're hard as hell to find on the websites. They want to sell you that cheap Chinese shit. You might pay as much as $10 more for one of these 1PZ carbs, okay? It's actually a trademark. I have no idea who makes them. If anybody has any information on these carburetors, I, I would love to hear it because... I have not bought a bad one. I can't remember having one of these that was bad. Versus everything else off of eBay and Amazon at times. It, it, it works for a minute and then it doesn't. Okay? So, you can actually date your machine. Where's the other carburetor? See? That might have very well been a replacement motor from back in the 60s. Okay? Because that has the adjustment for idle air fuel mixture. And it's very important to a machine that has to pull a lot of RPM with a governor's type of setup. I don't know what the new carburetor I ordered for that. It does not look like it has an adjustment on it. So that machine may not, it may either have to be jetted or I'm going to have to search and see if I can get a 1PZ carb for it that does have an adjustment. Because like I said, I'm not going to pull the plug out of that one unless it doesn't run right. Then I'm going to pull the plug out of it and see if there's an adjustment. Because 9 chances out of 10... I bought a couple of them, and there is an adjustment, but it does nothing, absolutely nothing. You can't adjust it. Don't ask me why. Maybe they're using an actual factory casting, so they put that in there. But I have not noticed that it's like a needle valve, you know, like, like it lets it flow. It's just more or less like a screw. Now, getting to my other genius idea, okay? This is something to check. When you're playing with motors, and especially engines from different years, even though they're basically the same and the same brand, the same make of motor... I switched, this is my genius idea, I want to put electric start on that little brush grinder, okay? So, this is your top dead center, both valves are closed, okay, and as it fires, okay, you'll see the valve, it blows the piston back down, completely, completely fires in the chamber, and then the exhaust valve opens, okay? So now you know that this motor functions clockwise, okay? So this has the teeth. This one does not, okay? I checked top dead center. Now that this motor is free, okay? Now there's your other exhaust stroke. Here's your intake stroke as it goes back down. Okay, so I'm checking where that's firing. I don't have to degree it. These two are dead balls on. But that's always something when you're, you're, you're taking a small engine flywheel and maybe trying to make one electric start that wasn't, okay, that's something to keep in the back of your mind as to whether, okay, where that thing is going to fire at top dead center or is it off? Are you a little bit off? You're fi you know what I mean? Maybe if it was up here, okay, that's not firing. But, you know, when I take it around, okay, and that comes back up, the valves are completely closed. Okay, so I know that this is degreed correctly. All right, so hopefully I've helped explain about EPA carburetors and what to do. And I told you for small engine, uh, some of these carburetors, uh, 
these Chinese carburetors, these, you can actually get those motorized bicycle jets and they will fit from the motorized bicycles. I have done it to some, not all. Again, it's not a conclusive thing, okay? All right. What happened in, in this generation or two? Way to go, Ace. Would you like to knock something over? Maybe my camera? This cat is, he's bored out of his furry skull. This is Dave, the orange cat I took in. He is just literally out of his head bored. Uh, anyway, we, he got his cat litter today. Because uh, of the storm, the cat litter was delayed. Now, let me get my brain back on what I was saying. They got rid of paper catalogs, okay? I was looking at my note sheet. You're completely dependent on China. I have some catalogs uh, dating uh, to the 60s and 70s for Chrysler and General Motors, okay? I covet anything. I, I used to go look in dumpsters and stuff. Uh, before Iraq, I did have a good uh, stack of parts references. I had Moog, okay, for one. I had McPherson, like, for struts because the strut cars were coming out. Uh, in my family, they had like the Mercury Zephyr with the McPherson strut. That was a new thing. So it was nice to have some of the catalogs. But I had Moog. Uh, I had Holly. Um, I had some of the other stuff on Champion plugs. And I had Auto Light plugs. I had a lot of spark plug catalogs. Like uh, today, I prefer like the, uh, if I can buy them, the E3 spark plugs. Uh, especially for small engine. Uh, you get a little bit hotter spark uh, pretty much. They're decent. I've, I've had Champion plugs brand new out of the box. The porcelain pulled off of them. You're hardly getting a spark out of them. Um, and then I had NGK clones, those uh, copied uh, spark plugs, you know, those genius Chinese in the bottle. Those guys too. So, yeah, there's a lot of it, okay? We have a, a pressing, you know, economy right now. And if you're going to do something for yourself, try to do it right. And a little bit of coaching, you know, like the coach buck type of thing. Um, you know, you put, you, you go to somebody that knows. And a lot of people in this area are unfriendly. To even They won't even share information if you get your, you know, your, your, uh, I, I, I was tired. I had a, a, a rodeo with a tie rod end. And I wasn't thinking straight. And I went to a shop. And finally, the next day when I woke up, it dawned on me what I did with it. And I got it all straightened out. But, you know, you think that, that these you know, people would be out to help you. It's, it's like they resent you or, oh, you're coming around for free or, you know, fuck you. You're fixing your car yourself. We're a shop. We're in business for money. It doesn't make me want to take things there. And that's, it's more or less anymore why I want to register my stuff classic so I don't have to uh, deal with that state inspection and that attitude. And especially if they want to inspect a 25, 30-year-old vehicle like it's a brand new one. Unless it absolutely needs something that I can't do, like exhaust or something I don't want to do, um, I'm going to do it myself until my health uh, totally fails. Because these people are aggravating. And it's why, like I said, I do try to make YouTube videos for folks like you. Okay? There's people out there that, oh, I'd like to fix my motor, you know, that, that lawnmower or whatever. Lawnmowers are a fickle thing, and I told you about those nuts, bolts, and screws for them little critters. Don't lose them. Do not lose them. Okay, so that concludes a little bit of the EPA carburetor because we all remember the 1970s with those Rochesters. They had you had, to, you had to actually pull the carburetor off and get those little plugs out and to get to the, the, the idle jets and some of the Fords where they, they were coming through like that. Holy cripes! And then Chrysler, they had carburetors that, that they were adjusting the fuel and the air mixture through their electronic hocus pocus. It was enough. To, it was a maddening time. And I was glad I was kind of, I left for the military because a lot of that stuff, like it was an unproven technology that actually it just, it was one failure after another and there was no fixing it. Because a lot of times you went to the, <coughs> to the parts store, you got another carburetor <coughs> and it was bad too. You know, and, and then like I said, then a lot of guys like me, I was discouraged from staying as a mechanic uh, because of that. And that's why my father and, and my grandfather you know, basically, besides getting a girl pregnant, said, you know, you got to go in the military. Well, yeah, I had to go in the military because if I, I wouldn't have made any money. And guys were getting fired that had tool. They were buying tools and stuff, snap on. They're buying all kinds of stuff. And all of a sudden, they're unemployed because they're incompetent because they can't get a car running because of bad parts. And guess what? That's happening again. You know, they say history doesn't repeat itself. Well, it does. You leave a foreign entity that doesn't understand what specs, you know, and, and regs, ASTMI is, and, and, you know, ASNI, 
if you don't have any regulations and standards, you're going to get garbage. And basically, that's where we're at. And that's why I showed you that brand of carburetor. Okay. Like I said, I've never really bought a bad one of these carburetors that uh, didn't cooperate. And that's actually what's on my snowblower. Because that, uh, that snowblower, it chugs along. Um, it does run a little on the rich side. To me, it, it could be leaned out. But it is what it is. And it runs and it runs decent. So I can't argue with it. Versus I did have another carburetor on there. And it, 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 it ran, but it just had no guts. It had no power. I thought there was something... You know, maybe the motor, the compression. Well, I checked the compression. The compression was fine. I pulled the goddamn head off of it. I checked the valves. The valves were fine. You know, there was nothing wrong with that motor. It was the goddamn carburetor. And actually, at the time, it caused me an expense because I bought a coil with it, too, thinking maybe it was just weak spark. You know, there's really nothing, not much that makes these engines run other than spark and fuel. You know what I mean? So if it doesn't start and you have spark, you know, if you stick your, you know, hold that thing and pull the you know, pull the cord and it, it zaps you, well, you got sparks, so then you're not getting fuel. And I, I've had that. I, I I was telling people when I'm giving them a bill and they think the carburetor is 20 or $25 on Amazon, sometimes I had to buy two or three or four of those fucking carburetors before I could get one that would work. Because the, the, the shop down here was giving me the con job that they sell better carburetors. And actually a guy that was related to the family says, no, sometimes you got to buy three or four carburetors before you get one that would work. Well, guess what? That family member was telling the truth, and he was pretty much accurate. So, remember what I said about small engines are simple. It's fuel and spark. But it's also dependent on the parts that you get. And I also said there was a whole bunch of bad spark coils just recently. I don't know what's going on. Clone spark plugs. Chinese copied everything. Well, you know what? You look at that. A, a Timu. Timu is a great example. They're making carbon copies of brand name stuff. What do you think is going to happen? It's a no-brainer. All right, I got to get back to work.